Uh, we, I have a few activities I wanted to do with you today to really dig deep into the data. Um, those of you that came in originally um, noticed that I had ghosts and pumpkins and bats on the tables. Um, and, and this was not only just for cooperative learning, I wanted to make sure there was a bat with a pumpkin and so on, so that, that was the reasoning behind that. Um, but also so I can gauge kind of where I'm at so that I don't, um, I don't waste your time if it's something that you already know. And if you are ready for more, um, then we will do more in terms of digging further into the data. So instead, I'm just going to say, raise your hand if you're a pumpkin. I have a lot of pumpkins. I know you just administered. We may have some new teachers. OK. And any ghosts in the room? I still see you. OK. And bats? We must have a lot of bats. OK, all right, awesome. OK, so um, really quickly, um, I'm sure you've had NWEA explain to you, or you've done an initial training, or, or something like that. But, but the main basics um, that I've found through the years for it is that it's a focus on progress and on growth. There is no true cut score for it, so you have to focus only on growth. Um, it uses normative data, uh, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, we're going to go through some of the key reports, which I know you guys have um, dove into a few of them, and I know your principals have had extra training that they may have shared with you as well. Uh, some goal setting. And then finally, um, the best part of NWEA, which um, has not, well, to me, it hasn't been around for a long time because I've been doing it for so long, but it's probably only been out within the last eight years, is the learning continuum. So what I say is teach to the student and not to the test. Because it is uh, measuring progress and there is no cut score, uh, you, you can't necessarily teach directly to the test, okay? Now, the other reason for that is that they use um, a RIT score, which actually stands for Rosh unit. Um, so th there's, there's an actual man with the last name Rosh, and he created uh, this measure of growth. So it's a measure of growth over time. So you give a fall, winter, spring because that measures a certain amount of instructional days in between each testing administration. Um, but it's an equal interval scale. Okay, so your kids move along the scale. So it's not mastery that you're looking for, it's just growth. So if they are mastering those standards, along the way, then they'll show the growth, OK? So for those of you that aren't too far out of college, um, the zone of proximal development, Vygotsky, um, you may have had some class with that in it that you still remember. Um, so when I say RIT, I say ready for instruction today. So when you get your data, it will tell you exactly what you should be teaching that child at that moment. It should show what they're ready to learn at that moment. OK, normative data. OK, so I may be dating myself, but now that Friends is like the number one TV show again, and things keep coming back around, um, we have a picture of Norm here. Um, so it's normative data where everybody knows your RIT. And they know it because they compare you to what students in your state, um, in your district, in your grade level, um, 
NWEA actually has the uh, largest amount of um, schools in their linking study of all formative assessments in the country. So what that means is that they, their data is, um, is using districts with every demographic, okay? So they have schools that they monitor for the data usage that may be on the North Shore you know, of Chicago. And then they have ones that may be in East St. Louis, okay? Or Englewood or somewhere um, where, you know, the kids are, are in poverty. So you have everything. Okay, so um, there's a normative data sheet that's in the folder, and you, obviously, you might have one at your table. So previously, NWEA never did this. They never actually put a grade level to it. Um, but I think people begged and begged and said, well, are they working at grade level? Are they working at grade level? So they came up with this chart a couple years ago um, to give you a little bit of an idea. And they were able to do that because they started to match um, the standards through the learning continuum. OK. Um, I'm going to give you just a minute or two um, because we're going to talk about how you can use this to group your students. If you're not doing MTSS or RTI in your schools, um, I highly recommend. <laughs> but also, uh, you need to have some type of tool to be able to group your students. Even if you're doing centers in your classroom, you're going to want to have a reason that you're putting certain students together. Okay. So take a minute and talk to your table. Um, what data do you actually use to do this? I'm just going to have a couple groups um, share out and let me know what you guys use as a district. I don't know all of your assessments. Um, so I'm curious to see if you are using uh, NWEA. I don't know if you do Dibbles. I don't know what all um, you use. So. Does anyone want to share? Yeah, those two are the ones you said. Yeah. We, yeah. Those are the two main. Yeah. Okay, so Dibbles, NWEA, is there any other assessment? You just find guided reading, basically? Yeah. Okay. So you do actual benchmark tests. Okay. Okay. It's good to know. All right, um, I'm going to have us go ahead and get into our reports. So um, you were all told to bring a device if you did not sit with somebody who has one. Um, Teach.mapnwea.org is the website. And you can go ahead and log in. I'm going to log into mine. Um, and. We can look at a couple reports. Okay, the first report I want to look at is the class profile report. So if you want to pull up your own, you can. I'm going to put one on the screen and break it down for you a little bit. Uh, so that you can see some of the ways it's set up that would be helpful for you. All right, I want you to take a look at your report. I'm going to start with uh, reading real quick. They, they have some of the same on both, but there's a couple extra things. One of them is Lexile. I heard from someone that you guys use guided reading. Um, if it's something you're interested in, you can let Julie know, and I can share out. I have a really good conversion chart that will convert Lexile to guided reading. Um, so you can use it for that, too. All right. Um, the most important thing here is your percentile. So 
what, what you need to know about the percentile is that um, if you're going to group your students and you're going to find out, OK, who needs some really intense small group instruction? Who would be a tier three kiddo? Who would be my tier two? Who would need core? So what you can do is look at those percentiles. Uh, rule of thumb is fifth percentile and lower are your tier three students. And then you want 15% ideally um, to be within tier two. And then 85% should be in core. So if you have more students in core than that, you're doing an excellent job. <laughs> OK, um, if you have, I don't know if all, all, any or all of your schools offer the services, but high ability, if you want to identify students as high ability, um, the, according to the state, the 95th percentile and according to NWA, 95th percentile or above can automatically indicate um, high ability. So you may see some of your students there as well. When you switch to math, or if you switch to math, you may still be digging and reading. Um, what you'll see there is a quantile. And if you go onto the IDOE, um, they actually use quantiles for my third through eighth teachers. Um, the IDOE has um, information where they can connect that quantile um, to project passing on iLearn, so, so don't ignore that piece of information, okay? It'll be very helpful for you. Um, and you can find those bubble kids and just hit them hard before testing. Okay, um, we're probably only gonna have time for one of the activities. So, um, so in the folder, if you, um, of course, because data is, probably only exciting to about 2% of the population. So it would be exciting to me. But um, if you choose to, there's one in there that is using the student profile report. I would highly recommend taking a look at that. Um, the best way uh, to help some of your struggling students is to have them take ownership of their own data, OK? Um, the best way that they are going to try hard is if you set small goals that are achievable and you celebrate them like you wouldn't believe, okay? And you guys probably already know this, but um, you can even tell them, hey, if you grow one writ point or maybe their math score is low, if you can figure out your threes multiplication facts, oh man, your test score is going to go up so high. Do something that you know they can do and celebrate it. So um, I would recommend doing that at some point. The one that we're, I'm actually going to have you kind of look at and do is through the family report. So in the folder, there's one that says, how do I share um, students map growth data. And I know some of you just had conferences, um, but some of you will have them, I believe, next week. Um, the family report is a great tool to use with your parents. Um, it's also, you know, even if you don't have time to sit down and explain it with them, um, you know, it's a great thing to use even with the data talk with the parent and the student. So, 
Um, so on there, it actually tells you how to use the report, and it has them pick three different areas and then write a SMART goal, okay? So you can pull this information from the report. Another thing that I used to do with my kiddos, um, there was an older form that kind of did the same thing when I was in the classroom. And before conferences, we would actually get together and have a data talk. And we would fill it out and make a SMART goal together. And then I would share that goal with the parent. And that could easily become your Here's how you can help at home, OK? Your child really wants to do this. We wrote this goal together. And then you can share um, the family report. It's going to give them all the information they need. Um, again, it'll give them that percentile. It's nice with all the pretty colors, you know, just like dibbles, your red, yellow, green, very straightforward. OK, um, so what I want you to do is take a look at this at your table or pull it up. It says, again, it says create an action plan and share map growth data. I'm going to give you a minute to pull up a family report and take a look at this and see how you would kind of use it. If you want to fill one of the paper ones in, you can. And I'll come around to the tables and um, help you take a look at that. All right, I heard some uh, great dis discussion. I'm going to stop you there and move ahead because um, one of the main things I want to do is go into the learning continuum because I don't know if that's something you've had a chance to play around in a lot, but it is definitely where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. Um, so if you, when you are in the reports homepage, um, you have two ways you can get to it. One of them is if you go to the class breakdown report, you can choose a single student. Or you can go straight into the learning continuum. OK, so there's two different ways. All right, um, one of the reports here in the learning continuum, you have two ways of view. You can view class view, or you can view test view. Um, this is class view. So when you open one of the drop downs on one of the um, skills, it's going to standards, it's going to show you exactly what student is in that RIT band. Um, and then it's going to show you those are the exact skills when we talked about ready for instruction today. Um, those are the exact skills that that child is ready for. So they already do the work for you. All right, and I'm going to switch on you really quickly, and I'm going to take you into um, test view so that you can see. You can choose your own standards, but it also shows you where to move your students um, as well. And then you can use your own pacing guide, OK? Um, instead of going, OK, well, they're showing up here. You can use your own pacing guide to do it. Good afternoon again. I know I'm cutting Jackie off mid here because we've had some shifting. So we, um, we need to wrap this up, unfortunately. So I'm going to be sending a survey out.